Hello! Welcome back to Harry Has a Cocktail, episode 41. Now, I know you all just saw the introduction there and you saw the name of this drink, the kangaroo. Some of you who may have watched episode 40 are saying to yourselves, hmm, he was going to tell us something about the vodka teeny. Unbeknownst to very many people is the fact that what you might know as a vodka martini was originally called a kangaroo. To quote Robert Simonson from the Three Ingredient Cocktail Book, martini purists would have been saved so much aggravation over the last half century if lovers of vodka martinis had just stuck to one of the drink's original names, the kangaroo, rather than koa the hallowed martini name. One of Robert Simonson's main goals here is he wants to promulgate Big word, right? <laughs> if you would like to order a vodka teeny, call it the kangaroo instead. He believes this will spread peace, love, and joy between martini purists and vodka teeny drinkers. I'm not so sure. So I got to thinking about vodka. This might be a bit of a philosophical edition of Harry Has a Cocktail. When I was a kid, most of the people in my family, the men primarily, I would say drank beer. And I don't know if you felt this way as a child, but to me, beer just smelled completely disgusting. I also associated it with a bar that my dad used to go to named Risingers. Risingers. Risingers was this place that just was one of those dive neighborhood bars that all smell exactly the same. At least then, because then people could smoke in bars. I mean, it just reeked every time we went in there. Yes, we were taken to Risingers quite often because it was my dad's hangout. I mean, if my mom was out doing something and my dad had to watch the kids, we went to the bar with him. Isn't there some movie where Reese Witherspoon, she says, you have a baby in a bar. Yeah, it used to happen to me all the time. Anyway, that place just reeked of beer, cigars, cigarettes. The floor was sticky. They had an air hockey machine. And I mean, there was a lot about it that was actually really cool when you're a 10 year old kid. But the smell of beer was particularly disgusting to me. And so I got to thinking about vodka. It strikes me that vodka being a flavorless, odorless liquor. And this is really interesting about the way Russians drink vodka is they drink it neat. If you're drinking a neat glass of vodka, you are drinking an ice cold glass of flavor flavorless, odorless liquor. Something that's going to get you drunk without flavor, which I think is a really interesting idea. You're not necessarily drinking it for the flavor, for an experience. You're definitely drinking it for an experience of some kind, but I would argue maybe you're not drinking it for a culinary or gastronomical experience. <laughs> Lots of big words here today. Now, I cannot profess to know everything about vodka. Please don't come at me. Vodka actually did not come into vogue in this country until after World War II. Of course, when the 1950s rolled around and the Cold War started, mm, vodka companies, Smirnoff, which was one of the main companies that was promoting their vodka, they started to have a little bit of trouble, but they kind of got behind a lot of of different advertising gimmicks and people like Zsa Zsa Gabor, Woody Allen, started to do a different ads for them. As we know, vodka has become the most popular spirit in the United States, which leads gin drinkers to wonder, why the hell do you want to drink that liquor that has absolutely no flavor whatsoever when gin is so packed Packed with flavor, I tell ya! There's a whole other reason why people want to use vodka. Vodka is very, very versatile. You can use it with a lot of different mixers. It will take on the flavors of whatever you add to it. But when it comes to something like a martini, where you are putting very little into the cocktail other than the, the main spirit, I'm not exactly sure why you would choose to drink it. Unless, of course, you don't like the taste of gin. If you don't like the taste of gin, you won't have a gin martini. I think there was also something else going on historically, and that was Prohibition. When Prohibition ended in 1934, you may have heard the term bathtub gin. These were literally people making gin slash moonshine in their bathtubs. You made it in the bathtub and you could have it ready in a couple hours and serve it to your guests. And from all accounts, bathtub gin tastes about as good as it sounds, which is to say awful. After Prohibition was over and people had been drinking all this terrible, terrible gin during Prohibition, here comes along vodka and vodka had no taste to it. I'm sure it had a lot to do with people then choosing to drink a martini made with vodka in instead of gin. We don't need to do that today because there are a lot of great craft gins out there. I have to also freely admit, 
I haven't had a vodka tini. See, I can't bring myself to call it a martini. I am a home bartender. I am not a purist by any means. If you come to my personal bar and you want a martini made with vodka, my friend Abby, I make it for her. Of course I make it for her. I call it a kangaroo. I can't bring myself to call it a martini. A martini to me is a particularly flavorful experience. All right, let's get to the drink, shall we? This is what goes into a kangaroo. First, we have vodka. Yes, vodka, that's all I've been talking about. Next, we have dry vermouth, which I went on about a bit in the last episode when I talked about martinis. A lot of people confuse what a dry cocktail is. What we mean by dry when we talk about a cocktail is less sweet. Where the confusion lies is that because you're using dry vermouth, people think, does that mean there should be more dry vermouth in it? No. What we mean when we say dry is people want less and less and less vermouth. When a gin martini was originally made, it had a much higher proportion of vermouth to gin. And over the years, those proportions have changed drastically. Bartenders go to great pains to make martinis very, very dry. Some bartenders will go ahead and do the wash method, where you pour the vermouth into the glass, swirl it around, and then dump the rest of it out. Some bartenders, they will just mist the inside of the glass. A person who wants a bone dry martini, they want the bartender to glance over at the bottle of vermouth while they're actually mixing mixing the vodka over here. Third, we have orange bitters. We're going to garnish it with a lemon peel. We're going to make it in a mixing glass. You usually see me shaking my gin here, and you usually see people shaking cocktails. You may have the question, well, why would somebody stir it instead of shake it? Well, there's this thing that some people believe that when you shake the spirit, you bruise the spirit. But when you stir it, you're leaving the spirit liquor god molecules to go ahead and just do their thing in there and just let them get cold. Some people say you shouldn't shake gin, but you can go ahead and shake the crap out of vodka. I'm just not buying it. I believe in science. If somebody has a scientific paper to tell me about gin molecules being bruised, please send it to me. I'd be fascinated, but I generally shake my gin. But. I'm going to stir today. So here is how you make a kangaroo. First, fill your mixing glass with a crap ton of ice. <laughs> Next, we are going to add two and a quarter ounces of vodka. One, two, quarter. Next, we are going to add three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth. Three quarters. And finally, two dashes of orange bitters. One, two. Now, we are going to stir it vigorously until it's very cold, about 30 seconds. Okay. And now, strain it into a chilled coupe glass. Oh, oh, it's so chilly. Mm. And finally, we are going to garnish it with a lemon twist. Express yourself, express your twist. Express, express, express. Run it over the rim. Doink. Now, let's try the kangaroo. Okay, well, I have to say, it's not bad. <laughs> the thing that's really interesting about it is that, first of all, I don't think many of you would actually drink it this way. Most of you have probably been taught that when you go to a bar and you order a vodka martini, you should probably order it very, very dry, perhaps have olives in it. I would wager that almost none of you have it with a twist. I could be wrong. What's lovely about this drink here right now, I'm getting a very, very light flavor of vermouth and lemon. And I like vermouth. This is distinctly unlike a martini made with gin. I really don't mean to be a stickler. I just like specificity. I really shouldn't have that much of a bias against vodka martini drinkers. It's just what I've been taught. Craft bartenders want to maintain this kind of spiritual line between the martini and everything else. They're taking on this idea that the martini is its own thing. There's even this book, this classic cocktails by Salvatore Calabrese. This cocktail book is divided into only four chapters. The word, cocktail essentials, the martini, and chapter four, the rest. That's how precious people are about the martini. It's not just me, folks, but I would really, I'd really love to know if you go to a bar, ask a bartender for a kangaroo and see what they say. You'd probably have to explain, well, there's this cocktail show that I happen to take in on YouTube, and um, Harry Has a Cocktail told me that a kangaroo is basically a vodka teeny. Anyway, that's all, folks. Thanks, as always, for watching Harry Has a Cocktail, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>